Hey everybody, this is Jason Akers with Green Acres Pest Control, and uh, I'm live, here, ready to talk. Sorry, I'm trying to open up a video, sign into the chat. I should still have this setting up stream, I think, because then I'm still kind of setting up. Let's see here. <clears throat> there we go. So I hope everybody's doing all right tonight. That's not it. Um, no, that's not yeah, it. Yep. Sorry, that's my son. All right, so we're going to talk about. I had a I had a question actually that came in um, right as I was going live on uh, my Discord channel. So, for those interested, uh, the Discord link should be posted in the description below if you're curious. Um, I think it is, and it's not. Crap. I'm horrible with Discord. Discord's something that I use to, to help people, and so you can chat with me pretty much anytime you want to. I try to get to people as quickly as I can, but you know how that goes. I'm, I'm busy too, so. Uh, and I try to answer people's questions all the time. But I had a question come in just as I was getting ready to press the live button. Someone joined up my Discord and uh, asked me, we said, let's see here, so I can word the question exactly the way it was asked. Uh, they said, I feel like there's no way to get rid of my flea problem. We've isolated the dog to the hardwood floors, vacuumed all the time, and throw, uh, I guess throw away the bag. Tried to plate, and tried the plate and lamp trick, on our carpet, found hundreds of them the next morning. We can't afford any of your products. Unfortunately, is there anything we can do? So that was the question that I got tonight. And I want to go over, so I actually, today, or yesterday, I had to order my pesticides for the spring. Now, one of the things that I use is Alpine WSG. That's what I recommend for fleas. That's what I tell people to buy for fleas. And so the link that I usually give people is, let me see if I can get this for you guys real quick if you're interested in going and taking a look. Right there. So that's my Amazon page. That's where I show people all the things that I use and what I recommend for front door open. Oh, uh, somebody's going to front door. Something that I where I recommend where I recommend my flea treatment. So if you scroll down to uh, through that list here, let me go ahead. I'll I'll share this with you guys real quick. If it will get big, I'll make this thing. There we go. And screen share. All right. So this is my page on Amazon, right here. Green Acres Pest Control. This is actually what you'd see if you were running it like I did. Um, but anyway, you scroll down through here and there's all kinds of different things. Bed bugs, mice, termites, all kinds of stuff. But there's the flea control products okay. right here. So if you go here, you've got Excite R, Nygard. Now these are uh, growth regulators. You don't necessarily have to put these in the tank. I haven't actually used, I use Nygard sometimes, but I don't actually use growth regulators every time with fleas. But the Alpine, so this is what people get all the time. So if you click that and you go there and you look at that product, that it's, it's, it's pretty expensive. You're looking at $192 for one bottle of Alpine. Now, that right there is uh, not necessarily 
what you would need to get. Now that's a 500 gram bottle. So let's go to, let's see. Do, uh, do my own.com. Okay. So let's search here. I want to show you that the Alpine is actually more affordable than, than you realize. So if we go to the Alpine page here, you can get packets. So this is really cheap. So you can get 10 gram packets rather than have to buy this whole canister for like $200. You can get these packets right here and they're only like $10 a piece, $9 a piece. You'll want to get uh, three of these. So that would be $30 for a gallon is how much that would mix to do the job because a 10 you want 30 grams so if you read the label of alpine for fleas let's actually do that real quick just so i make sure i'm right on the mixing so let's go to the label see do do my own is a really good website because they got the labels so let's go to the label here so we want to read for fleas so let's actually let's just do a shift f is it shift or oh, oh, control f and let's search fleas so we got one of six, so let's go down through this label. Fleas. Oh, so it is 10 grams. It's 10 grams per gallon, so you would only need one packet, which is $10. Nine, ten dollars It's a lot cheaper than 200 for a whole big 500 grams, because you don't need 500 grams when you're only using 10 grams to kill your fleas. So it says, apply to infested areas or potentially infested areas such as rugs, floors, carpets, upholstered furniture, pet beds, and pet resting areas. So if you've got like a pet bed or like a cat tower or something like that, you need to treat those areas. Uh, when applying to upholstered furniture, treat under cushions and areas where flea development can occur. Do not treat pets with this product. So they're telling you right here, you need to treat your couch. You need to pick up the couches. If you've got like lazy boy reclining chairs or whatever, take the cushions out, treat down inside the furniture, put the cushions back. Uh, usually what I do is I sit the, the, um, the cushions straight up and down like, like vertical so that the, uh, the air can circulate around and it can, can dry the couch off. And then uh, you want to put it all over the floor. You want to treat uh, your, your furniture and everything. Let it dry. And then you can vacuum. It's not going to vacuum up. You're not going to take it up. I actually recommend people vacuum once a day in order to... Uh, in order to uh, get rid of their flea problem and this is 10 grams per gallon so the question he said uh now is that something i could put on the floors vacuum up i don't need that insane spray tank no you don't have to get a bng if you don't want a bng you can get a plastic sprayer but the uh is this different than the stuff for ants no this is the same chemical molly alpine wsg it's the same thing it's just the they, they sell packets so you can get these cheaper packets the thing is, it's hard to find those packets. A lot of times, Amazon doesn't keep the packets in stock. It's hard to find them. And so I just have the link there to give you an idea of what to look for. You can go on to Do My Own or Do Your Own or whatever, and you can buy it there too, and you can get it cheaper in these smaller packets so you don't have to buy the big, huge... I buy the 500-gram. That's what I buy, the 500-gram container, because I go through a lot of Alpine WSG. I really use a lot of it. It's my go-to pesticide. So, but that's really good for ants. It is really good for ants. And so, but you can buy a box. See, you can get a box five of 10 gram packets. So that's enough to mix five gallons. And then that's only 30 bucks. So that's actually cheaper to just buy a bat. And then you've got it if you need it to mix more later. So, for those of you that, that are having problems being able to afford Alpine, it is much more affordable. You don't have to buy these big, you know, the, the jar or case, you know. <laughs> you got a case there, you know. So it's like $186. See, it's even cheaper here. So I, I, my Amazon page is a reference. So it, for, for those who, there's a lot of people been watching me over the years, and people always ask, you know, how they can donate to me and stuff like that. And I've got the Amazon page there. If you want to buy something through Amazon, you can go through that page. You can buy it there. But you can find it cheaper other places. You don't have to buy from my Amazon page. I'm still going to be here to help you if you need help. I'm, you know, I'm here to help you. So, but, um, 
Yeah, Rich, that's not a problem at all. See, that's the Discord helps on that. I was just actually just happened to get ready to go live when you asked me that question over on Discord, and I was like, well, I'll just answer it right now because I think I could do that, and it would be much more effective, and I could get the answer to everyone, even those that aren't on the Discord. They can get the uh, they can get the help that they need too. So, um, but anyway, that's how things have started tonight. I'm starting right into fleas. <laughs> Bed bugs die from alpine. Um, alpine is labeled for bed bugs too. If you read the label of alpine, actually I've been gotten rid of it now. But uh, bed bugs is 10 to 30 grams. I recommend 30 grams. It says make a spot, crack, and crevice, or avoid application where evidence of bed bug infestation occurs, or bed bugs are suspected to likely to occur, such as bed frames, box springs, inside empty dressers, clothes, closets, luggage, carpets, draperies, furniture, headboards, high and low wall moldings and wallpaper edges. Do not apply to mattresses. So that's why I don't recommend using Alpine for a mattress because it says right on it not to use Alpine for a mattress. It says to use it everywhere but the mattress. So I don't recommend using it. Uh, I recommend using Crossfire for a mattress because Crossfire is labeled to use on a mattress. Rich says, sorry, last question. When you said plastic sprayer, you could show an empty, an example of one. All right, so uh, I'll try, I'll, 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 I'll show you. All right, so let's go to Amazon. Because that's where I go everywhere. I always go to Amazon. So let's see, let's look at plastic garden sprayer. So these are your plastic sprayers here. Um, different, well, these aren't. They're like the chapel, like, like something like here. So if you were to go, now the problem with these, I don't like these. I don't like these sprayers right here because the tips are horrible. They're absolutely horrible. These are better. This one here would probably be better. I think it actually comes with just changeable tips. The biggest issue is that, you see that tip right there? I don't know, maybe the letters are probably covering up. Let me, let me, um, let me see if I can get rid of that title. That, is that the title? Yeah, there we go. So let's take that off of there so I can show you this better. So that that tip right there, that's a straight tip. That's not going to give you the right type of application for a flea job. The problem is you want something of more of like a fan spray. So let's see if we can find something. Let's look at this one. So this is a this has got a brass wand, which of course is better than that's better than plastic. It's gonna it's gonna uphold a little bit better. It's got some spare parts and stuff that it comes with. Let's see what we got here. Oh, see now that that's a little better because you can do a pin stream or you can do a fan spray. But the problem is is that's a garden sprayer, and the problem with a garden sprayer is a garden sprayer is really more designed to kill things like weeds and so they're not really so much concerned about flow and you may end up using more product than you want to use for fleas because you're not supposed to treat to puddle you're supposed to just coat the floor in a thin even layer of pesticide if you're going to spray for fleas so the problem is is that that's that's going to put way too much chemical on the floor and you don't want to over apply so Let's see if we can find a pesticide sprayer. Um, this might work here. This is a little better made. This is a better compressed tank. Um, let's see what kind of tips it comes with. See, some of them actually come with changeable tips. See, I don't know. The thing is, that's that's what you that's what you want to look for. So, without spending all night looking through stuff you could buy on Amazon, um, you want to look. Well, see, here's one here. This actually has this. Let's look at this one here. This uh, this actually has changeable tips. So you can have an adjustable nozzle. You can. Uh, so this might be something better. But like I said, you want to look at something that's adjustable. That's going to give you a good flow. It's not going to give you too much chemical, but also isn't going to give you too little chemical either because you are going to have to spray the whole floor. You don't want to be there all day. So, um, I had Alpine for the ants which come and bite me, 
but not yet 14 days. So it's been 14 days since Molly got bit using Alpine. Uh, what's good to kill roaches? Alpine is good to kill roaches. Um, been able to get rid of roaches in one to two treatments with Alpine WSG. Um, if you go to, let's see, can I minimize this? Bring that page back up again. So if you go to my page here, I've got, so I did a video, I don't know if anybody has seen my latest video on head lice. It's kind of shocking. It's a shocking video. It's got a lot of pretty crazy things on it, pictures, videos, um, and stuff. So, not for the faint of heart, didn't give any warnings, probably should have, but, um, so I added a new section for lice. So lice is something that exterminators don't really deal with because lice is something you'd really more need like a doctor to prescribe. But these are some things that I recommend using for lice. Uh, actually, when I was a child, we fought lice all the time, bringing them back from public school. And so uh, that's something that you do deal with sometimes is lice. And so this is the stuff we used when I was a kid, Nick's is one thing that we used a lot of for head lice uh, because the guy that he had bed bugs but the bed bug dog was coming back they didn't find any bed bugs and he, then no one could find bed bugs no one could even find really any bugs but then his hair started falling out and so typically that's a sign that you have head lice uh, someone had actually posted on the video that um, they thought that it could be stress related maybe just the stress of thinking that they had lice or bed, bed bugs may have been causing them to lose their hair because stress will cause hair loss too but i think it was probably lice so i i gave some you know some information on how to get rid of lice on your own because bed exterminators can't really do that but um so if you ever if you if you want you go back and watch that video it's a pretty interesting video um it's only like 10 minutes long that's why i didn't do a uh if my videos are longer than 15 minutes, I will actually premiere it live Tuesday nights instead of putting it up Tuesday morning. And so on Tuesday nights, I'm actually here to answer your questions live uh, in chat. I don't actually do like the live stream like I am tonight, but I actually sit there and chat and I'll talk to people and answer questions and stuff and talk about the video and, and watch it with you right alongside. But uh, it was only 10 minutes, so I didn't, I didn't worry about, you know, doing a, a release where I actually chat with people because it's just not long enough to chat. Um, so Richard says, oh, oh, also Gabby. So if you go down to my, I wanted to go over this. So if you go to the cockroach control products, Detta is what I use to bait for roaches. It's really good. It's a really good bait for roaches. I've got like some boric acid, Delta dust, different things that I recommend that work for cockroaches. Um, Demon Max, I recommend Demon Max on a clean out. So you can use that on the first time treatment. But, um, honestly, Alpine WS best. For, and see, this is where I actually found one that was cheaper. And so I posted this Alpine, because that's only 104, and that's like a little bottle. I think it's like 200 grams. And so, but you use 30 grams to kill roaches. You do need a clean out chemical, which is 30 grams to kill roaches. So, but that's, I recommend Alpine. That's amazing. If you, this is actually my book right here. It's a dollar book um, that I wrote. It's got bed bugs, cockroaches, and fleas. And so you might, you know, up because then it will give you exact directions on how to get rid of roaches if you're having a real bad problem getting rid of them on your own. It, it's the way I write I, is the way I chat with you. And so it's only like 40, 44, 45 pages. It's not very long and it's just pretty point blank. Do it step one, step two, step three, step four, all the way through all the steps to get rid of your roaches, uh, bed bugs, or fleas. And it's uh, any time talking like, uh, oh, well, you know, roaches have been here since the dawn of all time. This is stuff that you already know. Waste time writing crap that no one wants to read. It puts you to sleep. So, um, Richard says, I got you. I'll see you again. Thank you for so much for your help. Definitely subscribing. This channel is better than calling pest control. <laughs> you are calling pest control. I am pest control. <laughs> I just give it away for free. <laughs> Uh, Nicole, hey Nicole. Um, Gary says, I've teetered twice for bed bugs. So far, so good. Oh, I've treated twice for bed bugs. So far, so good. Should I do a third treatment? Only if, I mean, if you're not getting bit, I wouldn't. I wouldn't treat. Um, so, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, if you have a headache, you take Tylenol. 
If you don't have a headache, you don't take a Tylenol. So if you don't have bed bugs, don't treat. You know, I mean, I wouldn't treat if I didn't have bed bugs. Now, prevention is one thing. So to do a bed bug job, when you go and you do a bed bug job, you go in and you take the beds apart and you're treating the mattresses and you're treating the box springs and you're treating the sofas and you're treating the, you know, you're, you're doing a really thorough treatment and it's a lot of work. Now, you can do a preventative treatment and you can go through and you can do all the baseboards and maybe the foot, feet of the bed, not have to actually take the bed apart, but hit around the box springs, you know, take all the sheets and stuff off the bed, hit around the box springs and everything. And that's really all you'd need to do for prevention. But, uh, which is something I do all the time for like my rental houses and stuff that I work for. So if I go in and I do a rental home uh, monthly for bugs and stuff, I always do a preventative bed bug treatment. I go through and I hit the box springs and everything just to make sure that just in case someone is renting that house, and they bring bed bugs in, the bed bugs can't get a foothold and maybe travel home with a new renter that comes in like in a week or so. I do a lot of uh, homes out at Smith Mountain Lake, Virginia, because uh, that's just, I'm, I'm Bedford County, that's where I live. And so I do a lot out that way. And uh, I always treat the houses preventative for bed bugs. Uh, Molly says, question, my friend says about caulking the baseboards for windows, your thoughts, uh, I mean, makes it look nice. It doesn't stop bugs, but it looks nice. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with caulking your baseboards or your windows. It just limits the places that the, the, the bugs and stuff can come into. But uh, it doesn't stop bugs, especially ants. I've actually seen ants uh, tunnel around caulk. That caulk really won't stop them if they're determined to get in. They can get in past caulking. So my nose is itching tonight. I have got the worst allergies this, this year. It has been so miserable all year long. Probably, oh, I can't say that word. That's, that'll get me demonetized. I can't joke about a, a, a sickness that you know, they get mad at me. YouTube gets mad at me. So, but <laughs> so I hope everybody's doing all right. I hope everybody's excited about the elections that are still going on <laughs> after November 3rd. <laughs> what is this, the 5th now? Still don't know who the president is. <laughs> Nicole says, We used diatomaceous earth yesterday. That stuff makes a person cough. My boyfriend put more down while I was sleeping. Today I have been bit, but I know it's not over. It's harsh to breathe in. So the problem with diatomaceous earth is diatomaceous earth is a silicate. So a silicate, let's go over that real quick. A silicate, all right? It's a salt in which the, I'm not going to pronounce that. Uh, any of the miner minerals consisting primarily uh, combined with metal ions forming a major component of the rocks of the earth crust. So sand is a silicate. That's what sand is. So, if you don't want to breathe sand into your lungs, then don't apply diatomaceous earth in your house. The stuff is, it gets everywhere. It's like talcum powder, okay, or baby powder. So go in the room, take a bottle of baby powder, and just puff it, and look at where it goes. Now try to clean it up. It gets on everything. It goes everywhere. It is... A silicate is not something you want to apply on your bed where you're going to sleep, you're going to lay there. You do not want to put a silicate around your room. Um, it's not healthy. I actually just talked to a guy tonight about um, silicates and diatomaceous earth. I talked to him about uh, treating for bed bugs and how to treat for bed bugs. And I went over... Um, diatomaceous earth and where you should put it and where you should not put it. The places you put it is if you get a duster. And so let's go back. Let me show you. If we go to the Amazon page and let's go to, let's go to Carpenter Bees, for example. All right. Here's a duster. Now you put your dust in this duster right here. You fill it half full of dust, the diatomaceous earth. You shake it up real good and you take that little spout right there and you put it in around your electrical outlets and you, shove, you shoot it in the wall and you put your uh, electrical outlet cover back on. 
that's the only place you want to put your diatomaceous earth. You do not want to put it out in your room. You don't want to put it on your bed. Like you said, it's harsh to breathe in. It upsets your lungs. It can, it can uh, cause problems with COPD. It causes problems with asthma. It causes problems with emphysema. Um, it's, it's, a very, uh, it's a respiratory irritant. It's not good for you to breathe it in. Um, much like ground up sand. You know, sand is made into glass. That's how you make glass, is you melt sand and you turn it into glass. That's what silicates are. And so you don't want to use it where you could breathe it in, like on your bed. Okay, that's it's a bad idea. Okay, so I told my friend that I would ask for her. She's already sought medical treatment, but she believes she has scabies or perhaps mange. She plans to call the vet. She's wondering about treating her. So if she's got scabies, she would have to go to the doctor. And there are medical treatments for mange that you can also get from the doctor. You don't have to go to a vet. Uh, but um, you... Okay, so I had a customer one time. It was a very unique uh, circumstance with um, where she got she got oh shoot scabies. She got scabies. What happened was she had a possum that, that got underneath her house and died. And when the possum died, the scabies could not live on the possum anymore. And they came up through the floorboards of the, the trailer that she was living in and got into her house. So in an instance like that, you can treat your house. You can treat your house for the scabies. You can treat under the house for the scabies. And it will kill them. But if they're like a sexually transmitted disease that comes through, uh, you have to go to the doctor for those. This lady that I treated, she still had to go to the doctor for her scabies problem, and they still had to prescribe her a medication. It's like a cream that they give you that you have to use to kill them on your body because you can't just use pesticide on your body. You could make yourself extremely sick or even kill yourself. You do not want to use pesticide on your body ever. It always has to be prescribed by a doctor. Um, and some of the things doctors prescribe are pesticides, but they're formulated specifically to be able to be used on a human being without killing you. And so you don't want to ever use a chemical on your body that isn't, you know, prescribed by a doctor. Um, and so that's what you have to do. But you can treat your house. You can treat your house with just general pesticides, and it will kill any scabies living in the house. It will kill any bugs in the house. And so it's not hard to kill bugs that are in your house. That's not a big, that's not the issue. Because any general pesticide product will probably kill the scabies. But um, if you just do pest control, you know, treat your house for like ants or crickets or silverfish or whatever. And the scabies will die naturally because they hide in the same general places. So that's what I usually recommend to people to do if they have that kind of problem. So hopefully that will help you, Molly. Um, Gary says, I'm going to the doctor because of the DE powder is messy. My ex-wife dumped it everywhere. I think she tried to kill me. <laughs> Breathe issues over it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really bad. It's it's really bad. I um I have videos on diatomaceous earth. And I have a lot of people talk really horrible about me, you know, because I tell people not to use it. I um at least once a day I have to go into my diatomaceous earth videos and delete pretty belligerent posts. I have people that say pretty horrible things to me about uh, DE. I've kept some of them up there. If you want to go back and read them, you can go read them. But uh, I try to I try to hold my channel to a little bit of a higher standard to where you know yeah if you want to come in and you want to give a decent rebuttal and you're not a jerk then that's by all means, please do that, because I don't mind that. I don't, I, I don't mind a challenge. If, if you want to challenge my, my professionalism, that's perfectly fine with me. That doesn't bother me. But, because I'm learning, always. I'm always learning. And if you know a better way to do something, I want you to tell me. But a lot of people will, um, will come in and say just some pretty horrible, nasty things about how I'll tout all kinds of conspiracy theories and stuff like that. I'm just a pest control guy in Virginia. I'm just here killing bugs. That's what I do for a living. And if I find that diatomaceous earth will make you sick, I don't want you to use it. I don't want you to do anything that will make you sick. Um, 
Molly says, sorry, I wasn't more clear. She has a pet that she's taking to the vet in the morning. Can she treat her house? Does she have to treat her house? Yeah, I would treat the house. I would treat the house. If you if you take the pet to the vet while the pet is in the vet, treat your house. So that way when you bring the pet back, back the chemicals dry and you won't make the pet sick. Uh, ivermectin is an oral medication for scabies, also kills coronavirus, Larry says. Uh, Molly says, what products would kill them? The Alpine? Um, probably, I'm just guessing. I don't spray for scabies specifically. I usually just spray for other bugs and the scabies die. Yes, it is, Nicole. But I think you said you found it on eBay, didn't you? Crossfire will kill bed bugs. The problem in, okay, so in the United Kingdom and the uh, British Commonwealth, they have outlawed neonicotinoids as a pesticide. Uh, Crossfire is a neonicotinoid. And just like Alpine, Alpine is a neonicotinoid. Uh, it's a new family of pesticides that came out maybe about 10 years ago or so. Um, so when you get your license for pest control, you learn about the families of pesticides. So I, I had my license for since I was 17, so, you know, be 39 next month. So that's uh, you know, quite a long time I've had my pest control license. And when I got mine, they teach you about chlorinated hydrocarbons, which, which uh, is a family of pesticides that includes chloridane, lindane, and other pesticides like that. And then you've got your organophosphates, which are like uh, uh, Durzban, Diazinon, Malathion. Uh, and then you've got your synthetic pyrethroids, which are like uh, cypermethrin, deltamethrin, uh, permethrin. You've got your pyrethrins, which occur naturally in the environment in chrysanthemums and marigolds and other types of flowers. And now you've got your neonicotinoids, which a neonicotinoid is a type of pesticide that is, is unique in that it's fairly safe to use around human beings, but it's extremely toxic for social insects like ants, uh, uh, cockroaches, uh, bees. And the problem is, is that the, the European honeybee, which was imported to the North America uh, from Europe, is um, at risk of colony collapse in Europe from using uh, neonicotinoids in the improper fashion. So what's happened is people are getting neonics and they're using them in and around flowering plants and stuff like that and it's causing honeybees to die off and they actually are really important in Europe because they are a major pollinator in Europe and they're not so much here in the US it's not you know it's not that big of a deal because like I said they were imported here and so we do have natural pollinators in the US like butterflies and uh, bumblebees and other types of insects that do pollinate here, flies and different various things that you don't have in Europe. And so that's why it's very hard to get, uh, it's why it's very hard to get neonicotinoid family of pesticides in the European countries. So you need to um, be very careful if you do get something like that, if you are able to find that type of pesticide, that you do not use it outdoors at all um, because you can you can cause serious problems to colony collapse of honeybees by using a neonic outside. Um, at least it's, it, it, is, it is some advice, that, I mean, some evidence that points that way. They don't have any concrete evidence, but it's enough to, for the country to say, hey, we're going to outlaw this chemical. Um, so Molly says, other than ordering your products online, is there a way to donate to you? I get paid the week I heard Facebook and YouTube don't give full amount. No, they don't. Um, everybody takes their cut, Molly. Um, you know, honestly, I've got, if you, if you scroll up, um, if you go to my YouTube channel, so, let's see, I mean, if you're interested in doing something like that, let me see, and there, there I am, so that's an old picture, that's me and my, my son, who now just got his learner's permit today, so if you're in Virginia, be careful if you're on the road, and then this is my daughter, Emma, and then my Charlie was born, he's, he's uh, not in this picture, because he wasn't born yet. But, um, so anyway, that's a picture of my family, my kids. So let me see if I can bring up YouTube. So if you go to YouTube and then search Green Acres Test Control, there I am. There I am live right now. Hey, you guys, did you know I'm live? You should share my video. But anyway... <laughs> Uh, you can subscribe to my channel, but if you see here, you can donate via PayPal. 
that's probably the best way to donate to me if you ever want to actually just donate straight to me. You can also donate through Super Chat here. Uh, that's fine too, but they take a cut. YouTube takes a pretty big cut, but it doesn't matter to me either way. You don't have to donate to me at all. I don't mind just being here and talking with you. And, you know, I have fun doing this. This is fun for me. So, but anyway, that's that's what I would usually recommend. If you want to really donate, you can just donate with PayPal. That's fine. There's also Patreon for people that want to do like a monthly thing. Um, there's my Facebook page, my Twitter, and my TikTok. I'm on TikTok making crazy videos over there. So, with all the other drunk people on TikTok. So, um, anyway. So, let's go ahead and turn that off. Unless I need to bring it up again, I will. And put my title back. There we go. So, um, and that's if you were wanting to donate to me. I don't really talk about donating. You know, if you've watched me enough, and you're here like every week, Molly, and you know I don't ask for money. I'm not here for money. I'm here just to help people. I like to sit here. I like to talk too much. I talk till my throat goes sore. In fact, I've done that in a lot of my videos. I have one lady that actually said, I'm a doctor, and you sound like you have a chronic cough. You have a problem. The problem is I don't drink enough water, and then I go and talk for too long, and then I start coughing. So, Majestical says, if I were to buy Crossfire, what else would I need to buy before I order? Um, read your label. Just make sure that you've got the, um, the, what you need is you need to make sure that you have uh, the right equipment to apply it. So, if you get a 13 ounce bottle of Crossfire, then that's going to mix one full gallon of chemical. You may want to get a tip and pour um, jug. So, what is a tip and pour jug? Let me see if I can share that. I actually ought to put that on one of my pages so you guys can see it. Um, so let's go to Amazon again and let's see if they sell these. Tip and pour measuring containers. So you want one for chemical. See now this is like a tip and pour measured jug. These are just plastic, empty plastic jugs. So you can also get these little, what are these, quick shot type? Uh, where they've got like an ounce, um, and you can mix it so, like this. Here we go. P uh, plastic jug. Um, this is like an ounce, an ounce or a half ounce. The problem is, is that you don't want to overmix your pesticide. And if you're wanting to take a 13 ounce bottle and divide it in half, so that you don't, you know, you want an ounce. You want you want an ounce measurer so you can measure out six and a half ounces of Crossfire to a gallon, to a half gallon, because that's half that you cut the ratio in half so that you can uh, only apply half a gallon instead of mixing a whole gallon because as soon as you take that uh, concentrate and you mix it with water, it will start to degrade the pesticide. And so it will last longer in concentrated form on a shelf than it will mixed in water. The label of Crossfire specifically states that you don't want to keep it past 24 hours, and that's because it starts to degrade when it's mixed in water. So you want to go ahead and mix it and apply it. And so if you get one of these little jugs like this, it will allow you to divide your 13 ounce bottle into something more manageable so that you can squeeze it. You know, you squeeze a half an ounce and then you squeeze it six other times to get six ounces. And so that's a way you can divide it up. You can also get like a little little jar like this so you can actually measure it out to six and a half ounces rather than using a whole full 13 ounce bottle in your gallon sprayer. So that's a way that you can actually, you know, cut it, cut the chemical without having to, uh, you know, to do it right. You follow the label, you know, six and a half ounces to a half gallon of water is going to make the same as uh, 13 ounces to a full gallon of water. So, uh, Jason, do you mind explaining when and why you went vegan? Well, cat, that's a question I didn't expect, but I'll answer it. <laughs> so I'm vegan, for those that don't know. Uh, Plant-based, uh, whole free, uh, whole What's it called? Food Whole food plant-based. So basically, uh, I don't eat eggs, I don't eat dairy, and I don't eat meat, and I don't eat oil. So if if I want fatty food, I might eat an avocado or a hand of peanuts or something like that because um, my mother uh, died. Uh, it'll be seven years in January, and uh, it really hit me pretty hard, and I have problems every year going through this every January, but, um, because, you know, she's my mom, 
but she had diabetes and she had pancreatitis and she's really 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 sick and for three and a half years she is in constant pain all the time and she was afraid to have her gallbladder removed because she was always afraid to go under and everything but um and she, so she died and I'm just trying to lead a healthier life so that I can be there for my children when they grow up my grandfather my dad's dad had heart disease he had a heart attack uh, before he even reached 80 years old he had a heart attack and died um, my, uh, I just have a lot of family history of diabetes and uh, Dr. Esselstyn uh, I watch a lot of his videos and I, and I research a lot and my wife researches a lot she's also vegan and um, so we're vegan for health reasons not so much you know I mean people are gonna eat meat I can't stop that I'm not gonna throw paint on your you know leather jacket I don't care uh, what you do with your own life I lead a, a life as healthy as I can and I try to take care of myself and that's why I'm vegan. So, if that answers your question. Uh, Cheryl says, where do bed bugs come from and what's their history? Why do they even exist? They exist so that I can sit here and tell you how to kill them. I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why they exist, but they do. Um, as far as where they come from, there's lots of different theories as to whether they evolved from other forms of bed bugs. So, there's lots of bed bugs around. Like, um, they have bat bugs, there are chimney swift bugs, which look identical. There's, there's really not a real way to tell them apart unless you look at them under a microscope, they look identical. And so there are beliefs that maybe they came from other species and they just like human blood more than other animals and so they just feed on humans. So as far as where they come from, not really sure, don't really know. There's a lot of theories, but I don't think anybody really knows for sure. Uh, can you recommend a space heater that will go to 120 Fahrenheit? Uh, I don't recommend heating for, for killing bugs. I, I don't recommend it. I think that um, it's a bad idea. I think you burn your house down, Larry. Um, Josh says, is it possible to have bed bugs and never get bitten? I recently found some in my bed and checked over my whole body, but I haven't found any bites. Okay, so the bed bugs are biting you. You're just not reacting from the bite. It's a normal thing. I find that it's maybe 25% of the cases that I do for bed bugs, uh, they don't have any reaction from the bite whatsoever. Um, when you get bit by a bug, it causes a histamine reaction. So the bug usually leaves something behind in your body that causes a histamine reaction. And usually it's saliva. Like when a, when a uh, mosquito bites you, it causes agitation in the area. Your body sends histamine to the area, which causes it to swell, which makes a bug bite. Um, not everyone reacts to the saliva of a bed bug. It's just the way they are. And some people just don't ever react. I did a house one time in Hardy, Virginia, where uh, it was a queen size bed. And when I looked at the mattress, there was probably about two or 3,000 bed bugs between the mattress and the box spring. And he didn't have a single mark on his body, but it's obvious the bed bugs were feeding on him or they wouldn't have been there. And so, uh, you know, we just treated the bed and killed the bed bugs. So. So what is that thing called where I would apply it? I'm not sure what you're asking, Majesticals, with that question. Can you rephrase it? I'm not sure. Um, Rodney says, will Crossfire stain hardwood floors and furniture? I've never had it stain anything, and I've used it on all kinds of surfaces. The, uh, it does leave a white film sometimes, but it, it cleans right up. It, it'll st you can steam it off. I would spray it leave the residual for a month and then if you want to clean it off clean off with a steam cleaner it comes right off see you later nicole cat says i'm sorry to hear about your mother my condolences i lost my granny who raised me last year for the same reason it's inspiring that you want to live a healthier life i wish you and your family health you know honestly since i've been vegan i lost a lot of weight uh when i first met my wife well when we first got married i should say uh eight years ago we got married i've known my wife all my life practically but when we got uh, uh, married she was already a vegetarian semi-vegan vegetarian um, she eat meat sometimes but most of the time she was really really healthy and, and eating a lot of real healthy food and uh, I ate really I mean I used to put Crisco in everything I mean Crisco fat oil all kinds of stuff but um, I uh, since I married her and she's like you're not gonna eat like a pig anymore I lost uh, 
a lot of weight and I weighed over 270, 260, 270, somewhere around there. And now I weigh about 208, 209. So I've lost a lot of weight being vegan and taking care of myself. So I recommend it. It's, it's not a diet for everybody, I don't think. I think it's a real healthy way to live and it's very difficult if you depend a lot on like fast food because uh, like that's, that's what I was doing most of the time. So because I'm in the car, I do, um, I travel everywhere and I drive because I'm, I'm a rural type job. And so a lot of times I'm not near anywhere. And I, so I stop by like a Bojangles or, um, you know, a Hardee's or somewhere and I get something to eat there. And so it's a real hard diet to do if you, you know, depend on fast food. But fast food is not good for anybody. It's better to stay away from it and just pack yourself a lunch. So that's what I do now. I pack myself a lunch. Um... So what happened, Cat, to the guy that had the bed bugs? The way he found out he had bed bugs, the two, three thousand bed bugs that were between his beds, was um, his aunt was building a house and she needed a couple of. Uh, she stayed with them for a couple months while they were finalizing and putting everything together, getting their final and everything, so she could move in. And that's she started getting bit by the bed bugs and having a reaction from the bites. It said if it wasn't for her, he would have probably just kept on going, living right side by side with the bed bugs. So. So Majestical said, so if I buy the Crossfire, I mix it with water, now what do I need to apply it? Well, you, you apply it in a sprayer. So you want like a sprayer. So if you want, so let's go here. This is a B&G. Wow, that's expensive. Holy crap. Have they really gone up to $600? No way. No way. Why? I'm sorry. That that surprised me that they're... Ex no way. Are they that expensive? I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to... Uh, let me go to do your own pest control. So let's look here. B... No wonder people are telling me they're expensive. Oh, they see that's that's more see that's better see that's only but still expensive it's three fifty three, so that's what I pay for a B and G. I'm not paying six hundred dollars for a B and G. Um, but that's what I use. That's what I advise people to buy. I know it's expensive, but it's very high quality sprayer, and so you got a very high. I mean, it's five star rated, ninety three reviews, five star rated. You, my dad still has his original B and G that he had when he started his business in 85 so they'll last forever they'll last forever um so molly says my friend is interested in watching is there a link i can send her oh yeah molly yeah let me see if i can get it for you um try let's see is this the one That's the one. Hold on. I'll post it in here. There you go. Um, is there a way to tell you if you have bed bugs early before an infestation starts and are bed bug bites harmful to you? Bed bugs do not carry pathogens like diseases or anything like that. So they can't make you sick. They're just annoying. Um, but there's, I mean, you just have to find them. If you start getting bit and you're getting bit and you, you have visible bites, that's usually how people find out they have bed bugs. I agree, Majesticals, yes. They can cause uh, you know mental health problems because you lack of sleep. You're having anxiety issues. That, absolutely, that's absolutely true. I have a video on that, actually, on PTSD and bed bugs and the, and the stress that they cause. Josh Booth says... Is there a way to find out where bed bugs are going back to or to find their nest is? I can't find any trace of where they go or are they coming from. Okay, so bed bugs live typically around your box spring. You just need to know where to look. They don't really nest. They kind of just crawl around and they crap and they lay eggs and stuff on your, on your furniture. 
they don't really live together. So bed bugs have a very hostile type of breeding uh, that occurs when the female, the male actually has to penetrate through the female's body to impregnate her. And if she, if she breeds more than, you know, twice, sometimes even, you know, even once can kill her. Um, it's, it's a very, very uh, violent mating ritual with bed bugs. And so uh, they don't usually live together. It's not like bees where the drones take care of the, the, the queen and all. It, it didn't work that way. They actually try to get away from the males. And so they don't really live around each other. They kind of avoid each other. And the females lay eggs, but they don't take care of the eggs. Once the eggs hatch, it's you know pretty much a free-for-all. The bugs have to take care of themselves. So they just happen to group around and live around the bed. Uh, so Majestical said, instead of buying a B&G, can I instead buy a cheap sprayer? You can. You can. But it's like I went over earlier in the video. So if you, if you rewind a little bit and go back and look, um, I don't recommend a lot of plastic sprayers. There's just a not very many decent plastic sprayers on the market. The problem is, is that they clog really bad or they put too much chemical out and they're just not very good. And so that's the only reason I recommend this is because... All right, we're talking about bed bug treatment. All right, if you're going to treat your own house for bed bugs, let's say you call Orkin or you call Terminex or you call, you know, some of these big companies and you price a bed bug job. All right, if you're going to spend a lot of the prices that I've seen, the actual um, proposals, the estimates that I have seen with my own eyes from some of these bigger corporations, there's sometimes up to four, five, six thousand dollars. The highest bid I saw on a bed bug job was twelve grand. All right, so this is three hundred fifty-three dollars for this tank, and one bottle of out of uh, Crossfire is between thirty and fifty dollars. So that's four hundred bucks that you've spent that you didn't have to spend twelve grand. All right, it's it's even four thousand dollars or forty-five hundred dollars. This is a lot cheaper. This is a, a tenth, a 10%. It's 10% of what you would pay on an actual bed bug job if you had to hire somebody to do it. And so that's why I'm saying, it's, it's, yes, it's, it's an expensive sprayer. It'll last forever. You won't ever have to throw it away and replace it. It'll last, it'll last you forever. But you've got something that will work and will do the job right. And you can always sell it when you're done with using it. You can always get rid of it. Sell it to somebody else. You know, sell it to a pest control company. They'll buy it from you. They're good. They're good. I would never. I would be anywhere without a B and G. I love my B and Gs. I've got three of them. I'm actually in the market of buying a fourth one now, because um, I'm going to do a video for you guys. I'm going to show you the difference in sprayers, and I'm going to show you the difference in why I recommend B and Gs. But I know they're expensive. But I just rec I just I love them. They're great. Um. So Cat says I think the biggest thing that causes paranoia. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, is there a reason why they mate like that? It's just how they mate. It's just how bed bugs. That's how they. That's how. That's how God made them to reproduce. Um, from my experience, stay up all night and you'll send nightmares. Okay. Leon says, "What do you do in situations where sewer roaches keep coming up the drain? Bifrin kills them, but they don't stop." All right. So. There's really not a lot you can do. This is the time of year that that oriental cockroaches come up the drains. It's normal to find them right now because it's starting to get cold at night. You just have to spray and kill them. That's the best you can do. Okay, so Majestical said, "All right, thank you. I'd rather buy the BNG than hire an exterminator." That would cost me around five to ten thousand. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. That that's why I recommend them. I mean, I know people say they're really, really expensive, and they are. They are expensive, especially since they started putting this this plastic crap. I hate this. Like these little plastic things on here. I hate that crap. I don't like it. I, they used to be metal. I was actually showing a guy today uh, who was talking to me about them. I said this little plastic, so you don't see it, but around behind here, there's a um. There's a little plastic holster for this wand. Now, this is the extend band Typically, they sell them uh, in a shorter. See, this is the, the one-gallon 18-inch wand. They also have one that's just a foot long. 
and it goes, it fits in here and it holsters right there. They used to have a little metal clasp on the side that was welded to the can, and those were amazing. I mean, it never broke, ever. But this piece of plastic, this thing breaks all the time. I hate that. I really wish they would go back to the old design. The old design was a lot better. But it's still the number one in pest control. I mean, as far as actual pesticide application, application that's the best product you can buy. Even with the plastic garbage they've got on them now, there's, it's still the best thing you can buy for, for pesticide application. Um, but the, if you go and you look at the tip, now this is what I was talking about. This is why I, this is one of the reasons I really like a VNG is because you've got you've got a uh, a small end here for a pin stream. You've got a wide spray end, and you've got two different fan sprays. So this is going to apply more chemical this side right here, and this is going to apply less. So you can be careful on where and how you apply your pesticide. It also pumps up to like 80 psi, and so it's a really good um, piece of equipment. Josh says, what do you recommend someone in an apartment do if they find some? Apartments are notorious for not being a good job of getting rid of them due to the multiple unit issue. That's correct. So with um, oriental cockroaches, will actually come in and breed inside your apartment. They will, because they come from the drains, because they come up from the sewers and the places they like to crawl, they're very, um, they spread disease. They're not something you really want in your apartment. I actually think that oriental roaches are probably more harmful than German roaches when it comes to disease they carry because they come from sewers. They like to crawl into decaying things. And so um, what I typically do in an apartment that has um, that has oriental cockroaches is I do a crack and crevice and I treat under sinks and, and, and under cabinets and stuff to, to try to slow them down, treat bathrooms, treat um, Water, uh, we call the, the water heater rooms. If there's a room separate for a water heater, treat around a water heater real good to try to keep them out. Does alcohol spray kill bed bugs, says Larry. Yes, they do, but only direct contact. You're not going to get a residual. So the problem with... Oh, bed bugs. Sorry, Josh. Um, what do you recommend someone in an apartment do if they find bed bugs? Okay, so with bed bugs, you... Uh, you treat them, you kill them. Don't use uh, don't use a repellent. Use a, use like something like Crossfire. So, I on my page, if you go to Amazon, and this is this is a shameless plug. I'll post this in the chat. This is my Amazon page. I do get like three percent if you buy from my page. It's like a commission based thing. But you don't have to buy from me. You can go to do your own or whatever. I just showed you where you could buy B and G a lot cheaper than Amazon. And so if you scroll down through here and you go to bed bugs, I've got Canada, and then I've got um, bed bug supplies right here. So this is for the regular normal U.S. It isn't New York, Canada. Um, you've got Crossfire here. Now there was a smaller bottle. I don't know what happened to that one. Where'd that one go? There it is. So this is a 13 ounce bottle of Crossfire. You can go here, you can buy it. It's $39 for a bottle. That mixes one gallon and that will kill uh, bed bugs. And it's a non-repellent so you don't have to worry about chasing them into other apartments. Don't use diatomaceous earth. Don't use alcohol. Don't use really any other pesticide because you'll chase them all over the place and you could get in trouble. Cheryl says, I have roaches. Yes, the apartment sprays, but that's temporary. I'm scared of them. Do I have to live with anxiety? I think it's German roaches. Well, you know, that's where you really have to look into your lease agreement and see what you're allowed and what you're not allowed to do because I recommend Alpine WSG for roaches. If they're not using Alpine, they're probably having a much harder time getting rid of them. Um... Let's see, can I close that? That's in the way. Let's see. So if you go to cockroach products right here, this is all the stuff I use for cockroaches. Now, you don't have to use Alpine WSG for roaches. You can use like just some bait. If you've already got a guy coming out treating for uh, cockroaches, then and you don't want to disturb anything that he's been doing specifically because you don't really know what kind of chemicals they're using. If you use Vendetta, Vendetta 
is it's really good bait. It's got Nygard, which is an IGR, and you can use it like underneath your sinks and different places. Don't use it out in the open. Um, you just need like a pea size amount. You don't need very much, very small amount in and around the cracks and crevices and places you know the pesticide, the pest control guy is not spraying because you don't want to put this on a place where someone's been spraying because it won't work. Um, so you want to make sure you put it somewhere where they haven't sprayed. Like I said, underneath your sinks and places like that is a good place for it. That will help. But Alpine WSG is by far the best chemical for roaches. It's amazing for roaches. Um, Majestical said on the crossfire, it says shake well before use. Do you shake the crossfire itself <coughs> or after mixing it with water? I shake it before. So I take the bottle. I shake it up real good. I, I do that with every, every concentrate. Because a concentrate is not just what it says. I mean, it's got water and other ingredients on the label. And so you shake it up really good. So you mix everything up really good. And then you pour it into your tank. I, I'm going to do a video on how to mix pesticides. I'm going to do one so you guys know how I mix pesticides. But yeah, I always shake up my, my concentrate first. And this is with any concentrate, not just Crossfire. This is, you know, Damon Max and, you know, any, except Alpine because it's dry. It's a, it's a water-soluble granule, so you don't have to shake it. But um, anything that's a liquid that's added to water, I always shake it really good. And then I uh, pour it into my tank, and then I shake the tank real good, too. So double agitation. Uh, Kat says, uh, some apartments will evict you if they find out you're applying your own pesticides. That's exactly right. Um, Hyper Sage says, what if bed bugs were symbiotic? I don't know. <laughs> Molly says, thanks. Uh, for what? <laughs> Are you talking to somebody else? <laughs> so... All right, well, it's been over an hour. I usually try to keep these live streams to an hour because I gotta get some sleep so I can work. I actually have termites to kill tomorrow. So, um, but hopefully you guys enjoyed the show. Uh, like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will, uh, just so you know my schedule, I'm trying to stick to it. I'm doing the best I can. Although I have not filmed, I don't have anything to edit this week. If you have any questions or anything that you'd like to see me do on video, let me know, and I'll do one because I'm at a loss. Don't know what to say. But anyway, uh, hopefully this has been helpful to you. Hopefully you've learned a lot tonight. I'll see you again on Tuesday. I try to release a video, uh, an actual video where you can watch. It isn't a live stream, just a video. Uh, every Tuesday, um, either in the morning or at night. If you, um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. And uh, join the Discord. I've got, uh, I'll put the link as soon as I uh, get it. I really need to copy the link and put it in my description. As soon as I get that in there, you'll be able to see that later. All of my live streams are saved for future use. If you ever want to go back and watch them, um, like you might have missed something, you want to go back and watch it later, you can. And so um, hopefully this has been helpful to you. And I will, like I said, see you next Thursday. If not, catch my video that comes out on Tuesday. Y'all have a real great evening, and um, I'll catch you later. <laughs>